Hi, I'm O.Z. Hall. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This is the second video in this series on the RS9 Rhythm Sequencer. In this video, we'll cover more basic operations like copying patterns. We'll also sync the 960 sequencer to the RS9 clock. This will require setting some options related to the RS9 clock. If you want to be notified of future videos, be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell. In the last video, we created a 16-step pattern with a four on the floor kick and a backbeat snare. We'll copy that pattern and enhance it. Page 12 in the Quick Start Guide explains the copy button. Hit the pattern button, select the pattern we want to copy, hold copy to copy the current pattern, and select the destination pattern. Let's listen. Now we have our kick and snare sequences in pattern 2. Let's add a hi-hat on channel 3. First, we'll patch the control path from the channel 3 gate out to the 911 envelope generator. Note that the gate outs on the RS9 are V triggers or voltage triggers. We have to convert the V triggers to S triggers or switch triggers to trigger the System 55 envelopes. We'll use the 961 interface module for this conversion. The channel 3 gate out is patched to the V-trig in of the 961. Any of these jacks will work. The S-trig out of the 961 connects directly to the 911 S-trig in. And the output of the 911 envelope connects to the control in of the VCA that we're using. That completes the control path. Now let's patch the audio path for the hi-hat sound. We'll start with noise from the 903A random signal generator. The white noise output is patched to the VCA signal in. The VCA signal out will go into our output mixer. That completes the audio path. Let's test the hi-hat sound with the trigger button on the RS9. Note that we've selected channel 3 on the RS9. That's a very simple hi-hat sound, but it'll work for our purposes. You'll notice that we're using the second of two V-trigger to S-trigger converters on this 961. At this point, it may be worthwhile to consider adding a dual or quad envelope that uses V-triggers. I've added a dual envelope module to my System 55 for this very reason. Now that we have a simple hi-hat voice, let's play a pattern that uses that voice. Now let's go through some essential operations to program and edit on the RS9. We have four patterns at this point. Let's clean up a little by deleting pattern 4, which we don't need. We hit Erase, select Pattern, hit Pattern 4. Finally, we hit the Erase button again, and that completes the operation. Next, we'll edit Pattern 2 to get rid of the Channel 3 notes. Select Pattern 2, select Channel 3, Go to step mode so that we can see the steps that are selected. We enter record mode so that the changes we make will be saved. And we deselect all of the active steps. Finally, we exit record mode to save these changes. And we'll go back to pattern and test to hear the difference. So we've gotten rid of our hi-hat part. So let's add that hi-hat part again. We select pattern 2, channel 3, enter step mode, enter record, 
and we'll add those backbeat hi-hat steps again. Press record to save the changes. Now we're ready to go back and listen. Now we're ready to synchronize the 960 sequencer to the RS9 rhythm sequencer. I tried using the 960 sequencer oscillator out, the clock, to drive the RS9. I used the sync in jack on the RS9. The first problem was the level from the 960 clock out. It was too low. Next I tried the 921 oscillator individual square out. That level was also too low. Finally, I tried the 921 aux out, which has a higher level than the individual waveform outputs. This worked, but it adds yet another module to the clocking patch. To simplify the patch, I decided to drive the 921 from the RS9 sync out. That removes the 921 oscillator from the clock patch. Another advantage of driving the 960 from the RS9 is the clock tempo, which can be set from the tap button. As a bonus, the tempo can be saved globally or saved with the song or pattern. More on this later. Regardless of the tempo, the question becomes, well, what notes are coming out of the sync output? By note, I mean the timing value. Are they quarter notes, eighth notes, etc.? For example, relative to the drum pattern on the RS9, you can have the 960 clocked as eighth notes or sixteenth notes. I wanted my sequence to be eighth notes. To sync the 960 sequencer to the RS9 clock, we patch the RS9 sync out to the 960 shift in jack. We must use the same clock to drive the envelopes, so we'll patch into this multiple. The multiple is patched to those destinations. Also, I'm using channel 10 to send a reset pulse to the 960 step 1 gate in. This will ensure that the 960 begins at step 1 when we press play on the RS9. Now that we have the clock patched, we need to consider the note timing value of the RS9 clock out. For example, relative to the drum pattern on the RS9, you can have the 960 sequencer clocked as quarter notes, eighth notes, or sixteenth notes. I wanted my sequence to be eighth notes. To make this work properly, I changed the analog clock to be two pulses per quarter note. This is all documented on page 15 of the RS9 Quick Start Guide. Here's how I set the sync out analog clock. First, I press the settings button, then press button 46, which is labeled number three, clock. Press the tap button to go through the different options to get down to analog clock. Use the data control to select the option. It's currently set to one pulse per step. There's one pulse per quarter note, which would be quarter notes, two pulses per quarter note, which would be eighth notes, and four pulses per quarter note, which would be sixteenth notes. There are also 24 pulses per quarter note and 48. I want two pulses per quarter note. Finally, we have to press the settings twice, and now we've set it up properly. Let's listen. Now that we know how to change the analog clock rate, let's get back to the tempo. The tempo can be set with the data control or the tap button. Under Settings, Clock, the first setting is Tempo. And under here, the options are Global, Pattern, or Song. So this is the granularity with which 
the tempo is saved. You can save it either globally, so everything's at whatever the tempo is that you select, or you can save by song so that the entire song is at the same tempo, or you can change tempos from one pattern to the next. Note that other settings under clock include the level or granularity at which the following settings are saved. Go back to clock and then go through these settings. We have swing, which can be saved at various levels like song, global, and pattern. We have probability and flam. Each of these can be saved at global or song or pattern level like the analog clock setting. The last setting is MIDI clock out with values of on or off. And this is always saved at the global level. This is a simple pattern, but it shows the basic concepts for adding a drum voice on the System 55. We use this voice in patterns on the RS-9. We also laid the foundation for syncing melodic voices driven by the 960 sequencer on the System 55. In this series, we'll continue to explore the union of the RS-9 and the System 55. Be sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell to get notified when additional episodes become available. Thanks for watching.